The long wait is finally over for Nikon customers. The Nikon Z6 Mark III will be arriving in early 2024. Will it have 8K video, 6K video, a stacked sensor, and a resolution above 24 megapixels? Stick around after this short message for all the details. But first, subscribe to this channel for a chance to win a Canon EOS R5. I'll be giving one away to one lucky subscriber once this channel reaches 100,000 subscribers. Anyone above the age of 18 with a valid mailing address is eligible. Additional terms and conditions are linked in the description down below. After a very long wait, Nikon customers will be getting the Nikon Z6 Mark III in early 2024, at least according to Nikon rumors. So the Nikon Z6 Mark III is going to be coming in early 2024. It's going to be a very busy time. So what about the specifications? Well, Nikon rumors says that it's going to have a new 24.5 backside illuminated sensor, full frame sensor. It's not going to be stacked. And for this camera, for the Nikon Z6 Mark III, I don't think that's a major down. Um, um, I don't think it's a major downer at all. You see, you have to look at what is the real actual differences and outcomes of a backside illuminated versus a stacked sensor. A backside illuminated sensor, as this diagram shows, takes the circuitry and moves it to the back of the chip behind the photodiodes. This reduces the distance that light has to travel, improving low light performance because it's capturing more light, which results in better color rendition in low light, as well as more dynamic range. A stack sensor takes the circuitry to the back of the chip behind the photodiodes, just like the BSI sensor, giving it the same benefits, but also adds dynamic RAM to the chip, providing faster readout, which results in faster processing, autofocus, and subject recognition. So is having a backside illuminated sensor a negative? Well, that really depends. If you shoot a lot of fast action sports or you're shooting subjects that are moving around a lot, well, then there are certainly benefits to having a stacked sensor, such as the one found in the Nikon Z8 or the Nikon Z9. But if you're not shooting that particular scenario, well, then the, a backside illuminated sensor does improve low light performance, dynamic range, and color rendition when shooting in low light. So I don't see it as a negative, but it really depends after all um, on the outcomes that you're looking to get out of a camera. All right, now let's take a look at some of the other specifications in terms of video. It can shoot 6K raw, it can't do 8K, but it can shoot 8, 6K raw, and most likely it's gonna be able to do 6K over sample 4K, but it doesn't go into details about the frame rates in 6K or the frame rates in 4K. And while I'd consider the Nikon Z3 a stills hybrid camera, the focus is on stills. But sadly, we didn't get any specifications in terms of what the camera can do in continuous shooting or ISO performance or anything like that. However, Nikon rumors did say that the Nikon Z6 Mark III is going to support a faster frame rate than its predecessor, the Nikon Z6 Mark II. It will also have pixel shift. Now, whether Nikon calls it pixel shift or not, Canon calls it something else. Uh, everybody seems to have their own term for it, but um, I like to consider it pixel shift. And uh, as far as the resolution we get with pixel shift, don't know. We also don't know if it's going to take into account moving subjects, such as the Sony a7R5, which does a terrific job even if you have moving vehicles, whereas the Canon EOS R5, um, you're pretty much limited to food photography or product photography where your subject isn't moving and you can basically have your camera on a tripod. So there's absolutely no, co no compensation for any moving subjects, not with a Canon EOS R5. And if pixel shift did come in the Canon EOS R5, I think it was firmware 1.8 or 1.8.2, something like that. The Nikon Z6 Mark III is going to have both a mechanical and an electronic shutter. The LCD is going to have a variable angle LCD, and the ergonomics, well, they're supposed to be a little bit better. They're also, the camera's also supposed to be a little bit bigger. Now, this image here was provided courtesy of Nikon Rumors, and Nikon Rumors did say that, I know many of you think that the above picture is a Nikon Z8, so let's wait and see. Maybe this is the all-new Nikon Z6 Mark III. And yes, it certainly could be, but when I look at this image here, I do get a sense that there's quite a few people around, and this could be a very public place, but not so much public in terms that it could be a Nikon meeting with dealers, which sometimes major distributors or dealers, Nikon, Canon, and others will meet with these people some two months before an actual announcement. So it is possible that this is being show off, showing, shown off at some sort of, well, a dealer expo, 
or meeting uh, presentation. It's really hard to say, but the image is pretty good resolution. I'm surprised that Nikon would allow photos to be taken, although you could sort of have your camera like this and snap a shot and all that kind of jazz. But um, wow, it's been going on, what, two years now that we've been teased from how to fly and Nikon Rumors has talked about it. We had the Nikon Z9, we had the Nikon Z8, and people kept asking, where on earth is the Nikon Z6 Mark III, the Nikon Z7 Mark III? And here we are um, with something credible from Nikon Rumors, and they have a pretty good track record. So it looks like in early 2024, we'll have a new camera, a new Nikon, the Nikon Z6 Mark III. And early 2024, did I say 2023? I meant 2024. Early 2024 looks to be absolutely incredible. So this is one of two Nikon cameras that are rumored to come out. The Nikon Z6 Mark III and of course a variant of the Nikon Z9 designed for the Paris Olympics, a kind of sports fast action variant of that camera dedicated to, well, all things sports. And Canon, well, <laughs> no surprises. The Canon EOS R5 Mark II is gonna be announced in the first quarter. The Canon EOS R1 is gonna be teased in the, and announced in the first quarter. We're gonna, get, we're gonna get a bunch of Canon lenses. And for Sony, well, Sony, we're getting a bunch of cameras as well. The, the, we're not sure if we're gonna get the A7S IV. That one's kind of up in the air. We know we're gonna get the Sony A9 Mark III. Now that was supposed to come in spring, which would be in the second quarter, but um, some, some information is coming out indicating that it might come in February, which is what's happening in February? Well, CP+. And of course, Panasonic is overdue to announce and release a successor to the S1H, the S1, and maybe even the S1R, although I think it's more likely that they might focus on two variants, have the S1 successor and merge the S1 and the S1R all into one camera. I mean, Nikon did that with the Z8, Canon's done that with the R5. So I think just having one camera to take both the S1 and the S1R, but a video dedicated version of the S1H, I think that makes an awful lot of sense. Although I don't think we're gonna see 8K based on what Panasonic has been saying at various uh, trade shows and conferences, that they don't think that there's enough demand for 8K from consumers, and I would agree, but as a video editor, anybody shooting video, I'm really surprised to hear Panasonic say that because when it comes to editing, having 8K, detailed 8K video to work with, that's very powerful. And today we've got so many chips and computers that can easily handle that throughput. I'm really surprised to hear that. I still output in 4K, but a lot of times I do shoot in 8K. And 8K over sample 4K, it gives us more detail than the Sony a7S III and many other cameras out there. 8K over sample video is, I love it. I love working with it. Um, in camera, 8K downsampled or oversampled to 4K, downsampled to 4K is very, very powerful. And of course, when I actually do shoot in 8K, it's only been a few times, being able to work with that in post is just absolutely incredible. So. Uh, if Panasonic releases after five years an S1H Mark II without 8K, uh, I'd, I'd be a little bit surprised. I'd be, I'd be very surprised. And I think, um, but you know, they've made decisions like this before. They, they, they didn't prioritize a face detect autofocus system. Um, so it took until what, 2023 before we got our first Panasonic camera with a face detect autofocus system. So it is possible that they won't give us 8K. Well, if they give us 7K over sample 4K in the S1H, I think that's really good. I don't think there's much of a difference between 7K and 8K over sample 4K, but um, we'll just have to wait and see. And if you're interested in purchasing any cameras, as we've still got many sales on right now, such as the Canon EOS R5 and the R5C, at $900 off, there's lots of deals on storage, Sony cameras and lenses, Panasonic cameras and lenses, as well as Nikon cameras and lenses. So uh, please consider using my affiliate links down below for B&H, Adorama, and Amazon.com. I do get a small commission back, but that goes right back to supporting this channel, helping me purchase new gear. And I suspect that I might have the Canon RF 200 to 800 millimeter by Friday or maybe Monday. From what I'm hearing, it is gonna start shipping. Um, today's Wednesday, probably not today, uh, it might, it depends. Uh, Canon might start shipping them today so that they arrive Thursday. But from my understanding, retailers are gonna start shipping it and have it available for sale on Thursday morning. At least that's what we see from B&H. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see the same thing from Canadian retailers as they follow the same schedule. 
as Canon USA or Canon the United States and all the retailers there. So I'm looking forward to that. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on X. But that's it for now. Have yourself a great day and we'll see you again soon.